Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining our webinar tonight. Welcome to IEEE Talk, How Will Autonomous Vehicles Transform Our New Capital? I am Visa Otula, and I will be your moderator for our session tonight. I will first introduce you to Dr. Insinyur Jaka Sambiring, MNG, the Vice Chancellor for Academic and Student Affairs, who will be giving his opening speech. Bapak Jaka, kami persilakan. Okay, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of directors of ITV, hello. Is it okay to continue? Yes, it is. Okay, uh, on how will autonomous vehicle transform our new capital. So this is the first webinars of the IEEE talk series. So my name is Jaka Sumiring, as has been introduced before, that I am the vice director for academic affairs. I'm very delighted to be here today for the opening of these conferences. Thank you to all of the attendees who gather here tonight to participate in this event. I also would like to address our respected and honorable speakers and guests, Mr. Budi Karyasumadi, as the Minister of Transportation of the Republic of Indonesia, Mr. Hamam Riza, my colleague, as the head of the BPPT, and also here, uh, Professor Suhono, as the directors of smart cities and communication innovation centers. And last but not least, Ms. Kritika Kandasami as the head of business development from Kinetic Advanced Robotic Groups. Honorable guests in attendees, uh, to give you a head start about our discussion topic tonight, let us pay attention to one of the very famous people on this planet in this field, Elon Musk, who says self-driving cars are the natural extension of active safety and obviously something we should do. In recent days, self-driving cars have become a celebrated latest innovation due to its practicality. This development makes so many have wondered, is it possible to implement this innovation in Indonesia? So this idea and the topics on moving our capital to a new city brings a lot of opportunities for many people for professionals to explore the possibility to tackle the current capital problem in Jakarta. It is traffic jam. One of the idea that become the topics for everyone is about implementing an autonomous electric vehicle, AEV system for public transportation to solve that traffic jams, preventing it to ever happen again in the new 
capital. Self-driving cars seems like the best solution for transportation problem. But is the new capital of Indonesia ready for it? In this regard, I really appreciate the activities of the IEEE ITB student branch collaborating with the School of Electrical Engineering and Informatics, IEEE Industrial Section, to host this webinar to talk in detail about AEV in the new capital from the viewpoints of our respective speakers here. I hope that all of you here enjoy a webinar tonight. I really look forward to have more discussion about the transportation issue from a wide spectrum of perspective. Thank you for your attention. Once again, I welcome you to our tonight webinar, IEEE Talks, how will autonomous vehicle transform our new capital? Thank you, good night. Thank you, Pajaka, for your opening speech. Next, uh, Michael Kresna, the chairman of IEEE ITB student branch will be giving his opening remarks. Come Michael, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Biza, uh, and thank you, Pak Jaka, for the warm, uh, warm welcome. Hello, uh, welcome everyone to IEEE Talk, episode one. Uh, my name is Michael, the chairman of IEEE ITB student branch, and thank you all for coming. I hope you and your doing well right now. It's so good to have you all here on our webinar amidst this global pandemic that still burden us. But hopefully after tonight, we can light up the situation a little bit and getting back to be optimistic. Okay, first thing and foremost, uh, tonight we will be joined by some notable speakers. Uh, it is my pleasure to welcome our beloved Minister of Transportation, Pak Budi Karyasmadi. Selamat datang, Pak Menhub. Also tonight, we will also be joined by some fa uh, familiar faces. If you're from Hame ITB, Head of Badan Pengajian dan Penerapan Teknologi uh, BPPT, Pak Hamam Rizal. Selamat datang, Pak Hamam. Dan uh, Prof. Suwano Spangkat, our leader on smart city development in Indonesia. Welcome, Prof. And last but definitely not least, Ms. Kritika Kandasami, Head of Business Development of renowned engineering company, ST Engineering Singapore. Thank you so much for sparing your time. And also not forgetting, welcome to our invited guests from ITB, Stay, Siemens, Bosch, and many others. Okay, autonomous vehicle. Yes, you may be wondering why I actually ITB choose this uh, specific topic. There are a lot of contra and arguments against it out there. People say that self-driving vehicle is not safe. They are not capable. It's just driving, it's not thinking. Well, that's why we're here. Despite all the narratives about the autonomous vehicle, we, IEEE ITB, believe autonomous vehicle could be the key to unlock abundant opportunities for humanity, especially for our upcoming new capital. We see AV has all the capability to increase our productivity, and we really want to dispel all the myths out there about the threats AV provides. With the proper infrastructure and well-planned design, we believe all of these things will work just fine. And hopefully, after we press the lift button by the end of this webinar, you can be the part of this transition to more advanced humanity in Indonesia. Well, I think you all couldn't wait for this webinar to get started. So enough for me, I will give it back to Visa. Enjoy the content, enjoy the discussion, and welcome to IEEE Talk. Thank you, Carmichael, for your speech. Before our session starts, let me explain how the webinar goes. The automatic setup for all participants are muted microphones and disabled videos. We will have an interactive poll in the end of every presentation, so please contribute in answering them. There will also be a Q&A session after the presentation. I would like to first remind everyone to not share the Zoom link or passwords to any other parties to ensure the safety of this webinar. Make sure that your name is exactly the same as one in the registration form. And if you need to say anything, you may use the chat room accordingly. A triple EITB student branch has the right to remove those who doesn't meet the requirements stated before. Thank you to State ITB, A triple Indonesia section, Asosiasi Prakarsa Indonesia Cerdas, Impulse ITB, Command Hope, and BPPT for collaborating with us on this event. Also, a big thank you to our partners, Aiki, SBUB, SBITS, Ashra ITB, ITB Hits, and SBUI. 
So during the session, we will be thoroughly discussing the utilization of autonomous electric vehicles, especially in the new Indonesian capital. Based on the viewpoint of our experts who will be presented as our speakers this evening. News about Indonesia moving its capital in the new city on Kalimantan brought forth new opportunities for professionals to explore possibilities to tackle the problems of Indonesia's current capital, Jakarta. And one of the possibilities is the implementation of the AEV system for the public transportation and effort to solve Jakarta's most famous problems such as traffic jam, bringing a much more controlled and safer system of transportation in Indonesia, and opening our worlds to safer roads, higher productivity, and a friendlier environment. Self-driving vehicles seems like the best solution to solve all the transportation problems that exist. But again, the question still remains, is the capital city of Indonesia ready for AUV? I would like to welcome our distinguished speakers for the night. The first being Bapak Insinyur Budi Karya Sumadi, the Indonesian Minister of Transportation. Selamat malam, Pak Budi. Malam. Malam. Our second speaker is Dr. Insinyur Hamam Riza, MSc, the Chairman of BPPT, or the Agency for the Assessment and Application of Technology. Malam, Pak Riza. Um, Malam. Malam. Yeah. Malam. We also have our third speaker, Ms. Kritika Kandasami, currently the Head of Business Development of Kinetics Advanced Robotics at SC Engineering. Good evening, Ms. Kritika. Good evening. Good yeah. evening. And alongside her is Professor in Dr. Insinyur Suhono Harsosumpangkat, MNG, the Director of Smart Cities and Communities Innovation Center. Okay. Selamat malam, Professor. Saya tidak, selamat malam. Gambar saya tidak bisa dilihat. Pasti sempat pemerhatian ya, nggak bisa start videonya. Oh ya, nggak apa-apa Pak. Uh, tolong diliatin dibuka di start video. Iya Pak. Yep. Oke, okay. it's a pleasure to have you all here, Bapak Budi Karya, Bapak Hamam, Ms. Kritika, and Bapak Suhono. So, um, because because Bapak Suhono uh, has problems with the camera, I think that we should take a picture uh, towards the end of the of the webinar. So first we move on to our first session. Bapak Budi Karya, the Indonesian Minister of Transportation, will be sharing his perspective on AEV in the new capital city. Bapak Budi Karya, kami persilakan. Thank you, uh, Biza. Good evening, uh, Mr. Jaka Sembiring, uh, speaker, student, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Om Swastiastu Namo Buddhaya. Salam kebajikan. We have we all healthy. Let us give praise to even Allah SWT for His mercy and blessing, so we can participate in EAA ITB webinar today. Even though it's a virtual event, I believe. We can get all the important essence from the this event. Let me first express to appreciation, appreciation to the distinguished faculty member and the student of Institute General Di Bandung for inviting me today in one of the most effective universities in Indonesia. It's great for for me to be here. To share my talk with ITB scholars, uh, our featured leader, as we know, ITB has contributed a lot of alumni who had influence on Indonesia development. Thank you so much, uh, EA ITB, for their spirit in crying out uh, the initiative to educate and conduct to positive event. Uh, despite this pandemic situation, I appreciate their effort for not being tired in producing public with the update reputation knowledge dissemination. Ladies and gentlemen, if we're talking about the background, uh, why we make it decision uh, autonomous. We look from first presidential, presidential directive during the special cabinet meeting on the G20 
January 2020, the President vision on the capital city, Ibu Kota Negara, IKN, for the future, transportation sector needs to apply electric-based autonomous vehicle technology. Future mobility with autonomous electric vehicle technology needs to be applied as a part of the mass and the feeder transport system. The Minister of Transportation and the Minister of Research and Technology are currently reviewed readiness of the autonomous electric vehicle system in the term of design, infrastructure, and policy. The government welcomes input from ITB, from the academy, from industry, particularly uh, practice, practice, and uh, to design reliable autonomous electric vehicle system, the capital city. Now we look uh, Indonesia already designed who is the, mina, the, the winner for the master plan. We try to make it a uh, transportation system design, uh, but not uh, based on that design. Now, Bapena still looking for the information, looking for some solution, how we make it uh, that city is better and better if you're talking about the uh, transportation system design. Basically, we thinking about how we manage, we plan, and we looking for some solution with the mass transportation. Based on that, we try to make it a special design for mass transport design. For the autonomous mass transport, we also not thinking and a limited discussion in our office or in the government, but also we invite many investors, many uh, people from uh, abroad, from Japan, from China, from uh, US, from Europe, to give uh, some idea to make it uh, autonomous mass transit is make it uh, better for the IKN. For autonomous, we not talking about the the major, but we also uh, discussion and looking for the solution uh, with the feeder. Important because uh, spoke and hub, uh, the major and feeder have to collaboration to make it uh, autonomous as Sunbrot makes uh, completely. Ladies and gentlemen, we also make it uh, some preparation. That's why we, based on the policy and regulation strategy, we have a three step. First, we try to make it development and testing. For the safety reason, in the recent year, autonomous vehicle have developed and driveless vehicle equipped with number of sensors such as camera, radar, radar, ultrasonic, infrared, GPS, IMU, and onboard computer. Second, we have to thinking and uh, prepare the infrastructure support. It needs readiness to take advantage of the autonomous vehicle in the capital city in the IKN. And we are also talking about deployment. How we make it the deployment 
of autonomous vehicle required policy and regulatory regulatory uh, review. Based on the SAE, we already know what we already uh, SA O one and level one. First, we only thinking and make it the human driver does everything. After that, an automatic system on the vehicle can sometimes assist the driver conduct some part of the driving task. And after that, uh, an automatic system on the vehicle can actually conduct some part of the driving task while the human continues to monitor the driving environment and perform the rest of the driving task. After that, as at level three, an automatic system can both actually conduct some part of the driving task and monitor the driving environment at some instance, but the driver must be ready to take back control when the automatic system requests. Now, if we're talking about the IKM autonomy target, we concentration with the SI level 4, level 4 and level 5. And automatic system can conduct the driving task and monitor can driving environment and the driver does not take a back, back control, but the automatic system can operate only in the certain environment and under certain condition. And the level five is automatic system can perform all driving tasks under the condition that a driver could perform. Ladies and gentlemen, we plan study of the Carvel City Autonomous Electric Vehicle. We review of the autonomous vehicle policy, not only the technical, but also social economy, technology, safety, security, guidance, framework. And also we try make it a bed parking uh, to the country, many country, to make it how the autonomous can give some advantage for the new city. Autonomous vehicle technology roadmap, we also together with Bapenas, BPPT, to make it some roadmap. And we provision the regulation on autonomous vehicle and infrastructure in the capital city. Ladies and gentlemen, plan for autonomous vehicle infrastructure architecture in the capital city means we thinking about data recording and sharing. We thinking about how we can make it with the privacy of the people who living there. System safety is how to make it the infrastructure is accommodate. Vehicle security, human mission interface, safety, crashworthiness, customer education trainings. We try to make it some input and uh, learning from many countries. post press behavior, we have to prepare and regulation this is important because without regulation, uh, we make it a problem 
after we uh, deploy that program. Ethical consideration also important because uh, this is a new lifestyle for the people. Ethic make it uh, that the problem is uh, clear. As the MOT, we make it operational, operational safety and security is uh, the target. Also, we talking about the object event and detection platform. Based on the safety, we also make it the minimal risk condition. And again, we make it validation all the step. Yeah. This is the infrastructure architect in the capital city. We know about uh, this is not easy, but uh, Minister of Transportation try to make it a partnership with the university. Thank you, ITB invite me, and I think we can uh, make it collaboration for the future and also the industry. Yeah. Because we have to prepare the policy. We have to prepare the regulation. We have to also make it EV technology, infrastructure, big data, and cyber security. All things is not easy. We have to prepare and the detail of the uh, item, we have to discussion step by step and I think we have to make it uh, sure we can collaboration. And autonomous electric vehicle in IKM is the future mobility implementation autonomous vehicle. I think uh, we have uh, many uh, program for IKM, especially for the autonomous. This is uh, the program have to many discussion. That's why I give uh, special thanks for ITB, special thanks for the uh, student and also the speaker. I hope uh, that meeting uh, make it, we get many information and uh, make it the better collaboration. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam Om Syatsu Namudaya dan Salam Bajikan. Thank you. Pisa. Thank you so much, uh, Budikarya, for your speech um, about the plan studies of the AUV in capital city, uh, mainly the design systems as well as the, as well as the vehicle policy and regulation strategies. So now we move on to our second speaker. Um, our second speaker is Bapa, Bapa Dr. Insinyur Hamam Riza, MSC, uh, the chairman of BPPT, who will be presenting a keynote speech about the blueprint and of the capital city driverless ecosystem. Bapa Hamam, kami persilahkan. Thank you, uh, moderator. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat malam dan salam sejahtera untuk kita semua. Salam sehat. Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya, Salam Kebajikan. Yang saya hormati, Bapak Menteri Perhubungan, Ministry of Transportation, Minister of Transportation, Bapak Budi Karya Sumadi. Selamat malam, Pak. Apa kabar? Salam sehat selalu. Ya. Juga kepada Pak Jaka Sembiring, Uh, dari STI ITB yang tadi menjadi uh, salah satu pembuka dari acara kita. Uh, also, uh, Profesor Sohono, my good friend, <laughs> speakers, also yeah. Miss uh, Kritika, yeah, the other speakers. Uh, juga semua 
para peserta webinar. Uh, izin saya share screen uh, untuk pemaparan saya pada kesempatan ini. So I will I will try to give you some thought on this Saturday night live. I think. Wait, oh no, I I triple E student night live talk about driverless ecosystem in the new capital. I think this is this topic was really challenging for for all of us, especially me. Uh, and I'm very grateful that the minister have uh, spoken out uh, really uh, very uh, strongly uh, emphasizing on the critical points of developing autonomous system in the new uh, capital. So I would like to actually uh, provide you with a, a deeper uh, understanding on what have been said and have been instructed actually by the president uh, for our new capital city. Uh, so uh, in the master plan, we, we've, we've seen that uh, we would like to have a, 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 a very uh, modern function of a, a capital city with, uh, with uh, putting the smart, green, beautiful, and a sustainable city as, uh, as the main theme of our uh, new capital. It, it will be uh, one of the most advanced capital city, uh, which uh, our government, our national government will, will run uh, the, the governance uh, toward the whole Indonesia. And I think in terms of what the president have said uh, in various other meetings, uh, the president would like to have the intelligence transportation system for this new capital. Intelligent transport system, innovative public transportation uh, with the, all the user friendliness uh, in terms of how you move between uh, mode of transportation, whether you are taking the train or we are going moving in the car or you are taking a bike uh, toward uh, inside the, the, the new capital city of uh, Indonesia. So some strong point that have been emphasized in many occasion uh, by the president. And I think uh, we all understood this from uh, the minister, uh, Pak Budi, uh, uh, earlier uh, speech that we want to have autonomous system in terms of the public or the mass trans transportation. We certainly would have a green building and renewable energy as part of our new capital. And certainly we are pushing hard uh, to establish our national electricity, uh, electric uh, vehicle uh, programs where we emphasize on having research and development yeah, as part of developing our national uh, vehicles. Yeah. So if you look at this uh, existing condition, what we perceive uh, for our new capital city is basically is uh, far reaching. Yeah. Far reaching uh, goals uh, is really a, a breakthrough concept of a, a new capital city. And we have not seen this in many uh, other plan, you know, within Indonesia. But the the spirit and the uh, and the business unusual, yeah, out of the box thinking have been put out uh, to lay the to lay the ground of the new capital city with smart mobility, smart energy, smart environment, and other uh, smart system, we uh, basically will give us a, a lot of challenge actually. Yeah. We want, as the minister have said, we want to deliver safe and sustainable self-driving ecosystem or autonomous uh, ecosystem. We need uh, modernization of the rules. If you look at the existing condition, 
which you saw in the last slide, you know, we, we, there's a lot of uh, rooms that we have to uh, close the gap in terms of modernization of the roads, whether it is inside the province or interstate. And again, we need to have the new regulation uh, and the new way of, uh, of enforcing the law uh, for uh, driving, for operating the autonomous vehicle, and for uh, running uh, the whole business of the new capital city of Indonesia. So I want to give you three, uh, three, three uh, points that uh, I would like to take this personally into what the ICT uh, community, yeah, the ecosystem, where you can put a triple helix or pentahelix into this, but number one is develops sensors and intelligence system and big data, which will be ubiquitous in the new capital city. Autonomous transportation system in the new capital of Indonesia had to be built with massive ICT infrastructures. We need sensors, we need IoT devices, big data, uh, data analytics, artificial intelligence, robotics and cloud supercomputing as number one. When you are thinking of developing this new capital city, you have to actually uh, put out all your capab capability, all your capacity in developing uh, this uh, driverless ecosystem in the new capital. Number two is when you deploy uh, this autonomous or driverless ecosystem, where you basically deploy big data, cloud computing, 5G network, and seamless infrastructure. It has to be a stable state. We, do, we cannot have a sandboxing uh, in this new capital where you need uh, try and error uh, some of this technology in order for you to, to run yeah, the, the whole ecosystem of the new capital. So this will be, this will be a challenge for the young engineers, especially the IEEE students, uh, the ITB chapter, and all the professors there, including Pak Jaka probably, which we'll need, we need every one of you actually, uh, in terms of how we should be de deploying this ecosystem and to ensure yeah, the stability of the system. And the third one, somebody, okay. And the third one is sustain. This will be something that people forget along the way where you plan uh, quite nicely, you deploy quite uh, sophisticatedly, uh, but you forgot to sustain. Yeah. Something like vehicle to grid, green and clean energy, the new capital will use renewable energy, certainly supporting autonomous vehicles and it starts with the use of electric vehicles. So at this stage, the government is pursuing on writing the regulations on KBLBB, Kendaraan Bermotor Listrik Berbasis Baterai, yeah. which will be on every road, train and other utility vehicles, yeah. including the public transportation. Our main concerns as cars are becoming more autonomous, cities are becoming more intelligent. I think Professor Suwono will talk about smart city a lot uh, and how the smart mobility will be you know, enclosed within this smart city. The IT infrastructure must be able to capture, store, protect, and analyze data from autonomous vehicle. Yeah. We cannot, uh, we cannot uh, do a laboratory scale uh, on this uh, particular uh, IT infrastructures, but we have to establish industrial scale uh, for these autonomous vehicles to be able to sustain. Yeah. The second concerns, concerns is autonomous vehicles could greatly improve their performance by integrating data from smart cities. So this will be a challenge for establishing big data in our new capital of, uh, city. And in the smart city planning, I think, uh, most of the stakeholder will consider to enable the sharing of data 
we know that we have satu data ya peraturan presiden satu data but we haven't implemented in all due respect uh, to all the developing sectors ya yeah, the national priority sectors and how that data can be analyzed and act upon in real time so traffic keeps moving and driver passenger and pedestrian are kept safe and the third concern this means that city needs physical infrastructures to handle the growing numbers of autonomous vehicles and certainly the IT infrastructure can easily manage data storage performance security resiliency mobilization and other protection for from a central uh, dashboard or management console so I'll, i will give you a few hints here on the current uh, technology development that we uh, we should be uh, looking closely on uh, vehicle to vehicle communication vehicle to infrastructure communication autonomous vehicle uh, one gate payment public transport system integrated public transport and smart parking uh, probably as part of how we should be developing our plans for the autonomous or self driving ecosystem and bbbt is working uh, uh, on a few some of these components yeah such as the application uh, on uh, information system for quick, quick response we are work also working on smart parking system on street uh, also on on uh, doing artificial intelligence on traffic counting and uh, and how we can do uh, you know identification and uh, bringing up a data set for artificial intelligence in transportation uh, as pa menteri uh, the minister of transportation pak budi have uh, earlier Uh, highlights to us you know we need collaboration on auto autonomous vehicle ecosystem regulation human factor connectivity is very key to the autonomous ecosystem uh, when it become mainstream connection between uh, vehicle to vehicle and vehicle to infrastructure is is only made possible by a complex process and we need to nail this down really uh, in order for us to have a seamless infrastructures for autonomous uh, ecosystem and uh, i think the acronym easy doesn't really mean that it's easy to implement autonomous uh, vehicle because you need to have electrified autonomous shared connected and updated yeah, system to sustain the whole autonomous vehicle auto uh, ecosystem at the end i think points to take away for all of us is drive developing drivers vehicle ecosystem uh, especially for our new capital city uh, nusa rimba nagari rum uh, rimba nusa ya negara negara rimba nusa we need a strong collaboration synergy and col uh, collaboration with all the stakeholders whether it is from academic from the business from the government from the communities and from the media uh, everyone are part of a strong whole of our uh, smart uh, ecosystem and i believe uh, we can achieve this synergy which means the whole is greater than the sum of its part the whole is greater than the sum of its part so you are we are part of the the whole ecosystem and the result can be better than the sum that's the whole thank you very much good night wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Um, thank you, Pahamang, for your speech regarding autonomous vehicle visualization, concerns of AEV, and also the current developments. Now, before we move on to our second session, um, I would like to have a little uh, photo shoot. Maybe, maybe the speakers could all turn on their camera so that we could have, um, a so that we could take a photo for a while. Okay. 
One, two, three. All right. Um, thank you so much. Okay. Before, um, I would also like to remind everyone to answer our interactive polls in the end of every presentation. Now, in this session, in the second session, Ms. Kritika will be introducing and giving a detailed studies of AV. So, Ms. Kritika, the floor is yours. Thank you, Bizel. Yeah, let me share my screen. Yeah, um, so good evening, everyone. Um, Honorable Minister of Transport, um, Mr. Hamam Riza, and also Prof. Sohona, uh, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity to, to give us uh, an overview about what we are doing in Singapore in terms of autonomous vehicles. So today I will be giving uh, more in terms of uh, what we have uh, deployed and how we have commercializing autonomous vehicles and how we are looking this um, into future. Um, just to start with, uh, basically my, my company. So um, I come from ST Engineering Group um, in Singapore. So we are uh, one of the, the, the leading engineering firm in Singapore, focusing on different um, expertise in terms of aerospace, electronics, land system, and marine. Um, and then for us, a land system group, we are focusing on MINDEF military projects. And also right now we are getting more into commercials. So for the autonomous vehicle group, we have been um, investing a lot on resources, on the, the new technologies, collaborations for the past 10 years. And we have been working very closely with the authorities to make sure how we can um, in, get into these autonomous vehicles um, in Singapore and also try to, to, to expand it in, in, in the other markets. Yeah, so, so going straight to the, the, the solutions that we are offering, um, if you can see um, in my screen, we have uh, different product lines in terms of autonomous vehicles, uh, meaning we have already started to commercialize the products. Um, so as you can see, first of all, we are trying to, to sell this as an autonomous bus. And also we have an autonomous vehicle management system. That, that is a very uh, key thing um, as uh, Hamam Riza Pak said, uh, we need to have an overall management system to, to make sure that the vehicles are operating um, as expected in a particular uh, site. And also co coming back to the, 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 the applications, you also need to have a mobile application uh, for you to be able to do it as an on-demand mobility system. So it's, it's going beyond just the tech itself. So for us, we are, we are looking this into a holistic approach on how we can deliver to our customers and also to the authority uh, in, in, in terms of a complete suit. So as I mentioned, uh, the reason why we have a different set of platforms is um, as as a minister of transport mentioned and also hamam Riza said we have a lot of challenges in terms of commercializing the autonomous vehicles in different areas so we are looking into a a step by step approach uh, what I mean by step-by-step -step approach is you can see the first vehicle that in, in my screen, uh, basically it's, it's a 15-seater autonomous vehicle running at uh, less than 25 kilometer per hour. And uh, this vehicle is mainly for private sites, uh, meaning you, you, you want a vehicle where you don't uh, need to have an operator, a driver, and you still need to provide a first and last mile solution for uh, a, a private site, for instance. So for that, kind of applications you can use uh, the, the smaller vehicles and slowly we are moving towards a bigger vehicle the second one we are building is a 23 seater bus um, and uh, the, the capability of this bus is, is definitely to go on public roads to make sure you have you can handle complex situations and it's not just a private site related um, aspect and the last one you can see is, is a 40 seater bus so this is is more towards uh, the the interest of our land transport authority and ministry of transport from Singapore Singapore, who wanted to see how we can deploy feeder bus services within Singapore. Uh, so, so for such applications, I would say the 40-seater bus is more um, applicable. But, but again, if you see in terms of the, the technical capabilities, we have, uh, we have from level three to level four to make sure that it matches with the application. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, for us, the key is definitely the autonomous vehicle management system, because right now, um, as per the regulation, you, all, all, you always need an operator on board the, the vehicles, uh, but slowly you have to remove the operator. And the autonomous vehicle management is able to operate or to monitor or, or even to have a kind of teleoperation for you to, to, to 
able to make sure that you you don't need a a, um, a kind of um, um, driver, you know. So 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 for such applications, definitely the AVMS is is a key. So we are already heavily investing on this AVMS part. Uh, so also in terms of cybersecurity, we are enforcing a bit more on how we can do teleoperations using the, the management system. And secondly, you can also see the mobile application because we have already started deploying our buses in different areas and uh, people are, the customers are definitely looking at having an on-demand mobility applications. So, so we have already deployed a such kind of mobile applications as well. Um, sorry, I'm getting a poll. You can yeah. just... Um, Sorry, I'm getting a poll <laughs> on my screen. Um, you can just go on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so as you can uh, see, uh, for us, we are focusing on the core autonomous uh, capability of the buses because that is very key. You need to deploy a bus which is safe and uh, which is also complying with the regulatories. So for us, uh, we make sure that uh, the tech that is going onto the bus is, is very critical. So as you can see, we have a complex uh, sensor suite on the bus. You have cameras, LIDARs, radars, you have uh, the GNSS base, you have a different set of uh, charging capabilities. So uh, these kind of uh, sensor tech on the bus is definitely enabling the bus to be uh, more smarter. So definitely we are looking into developing this kind of um, systems that make sure that you have uh, redundancy and also it, it solves the safety purpose of, of the, the overall uh, solutioning itself. And um, yeah, as we are looking forward, uh, definitely we are looking into the overall ecosystem, the entire value proposition, what a customer is looking at. So, so and also your authority, they're, just, they're not just looking at having this only as, as a platform, uh, rather than it has to become like an ecosystem where you're, where you're delivering a product, then you're trying to give a system integration. And at the end, you also have services because you need to do after sales service and so, so we are looking into at that angle where uh, you will be able to provide an end-to-end -end solution for an autonomous uh, mobility. And uh, yeah, again, to emphasize, I think we will not be able to do it alone. So this is definitely, uh, you, you need to have a very strong ecosystem in terms of partnerships. So we are, we, we are partnering with um, Institute of Higher Learning, um, uh, various institutions in Singapore and also in overseas. And for operational deployments, we are working with different operators uh, for both local and overseas. And also in terms of different aspects in the value chain, uh, we are definitely looking into having uh, different uh, collaborators uh, for us to be able to, to um, operate this vehicle and also to fill the gap because that is the, the, the main key thing because um, you need to have the, the entire cycle or, or, or the value chain complete. If not, it's, it's going to be very difficult for us to, to justify the, the safety of the vehicle itself. Yeah, uh, so our recent wins so last year, we have been working on this project since 2017 with Ministry of Transport. Um, so we were awarded uh, with this project to, to deploy the, the Strobo 5 and the Strobo 7, the, the smaller and the 23 seater bus in Sentosa. So as you all know, Sentosa is, is also a touristic place, but it's a, it's a high traffic density area. Um, and we have deployed this bus uh, to, to prove that uh, the, the, the technical capability of the bus is able to operate in such mixed uh, traffic environment. And also at the same time, it, it's, it's a first public trial where we open for passengers uh, to take rides on these buses. So you, or we also try to have this on-demand mobility app where people can book the, 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 uh, the vehicles. Uh, at the same time, uh, we also try to understand what is the public acceptance, because that is also a key for us to understand if the public is ready to take such new tech, um, which, which is still evolving. So for us, uh, we had very good feedback and we have uh, completed the deployment with uh, nil accidents. Um, and going forward, we are also trying to expand uh, the current trials to a commercial service. Yeah, um, and the second one is now for us, we are looking uh, the AV business in a very different spectrum because uh, the AV business, it's not just proving the tech, but also you need to see how you can make the application interesting because it's a new tech. Uh, there is a lot of novelty in it. 
and uh, people are excited to see such new technologies. So we started thinking um, how we can define the business case because uh, it has just evolved. So we, we still need to make sure that the business model is viable, it's profitable. Uh, so for that, we came up with new ideas like we started bringing in a uh, kind of night experience as you can see in the picture here. Um, so so, so this, this vehicle is now running in Gardens by the Bay in, in Singapore. So Gardens by the Bay is, is, is one of the prominent touristic places in Singapore. Um, and uh, the, the reason why I'm quoting this as a commercial service is because now people are paying um, $5 per ride. So we they are they are buying tickets to, to take a ride, meaning it's already a ticketing model kind of business that we have started. So this is this I would say it's already making a very good profit in terms of how we have deployed. And apart from that, the, the other interesting case, what, what we are doing is um, we are also trying to have a new applications like a dining experience within the bus. So it's not just you're trying to solve a first and last mile thing by transporting the, the, the uh, passengers from one place to another place, but you're also adding another um, element to, to, to the novelty of this particular platform. So that helps us to, to revisit how we have to frame the business model for autonomous vehicles. So, so the, the vehicles are running almost 12 hours a day. A day. Um, and uh, the speed we have limit to 15 kilometer per hour. And we have uh, the, the, the customer, I would say the public acceptance is, is definitely there uh, where we, 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 we could um, get the feedback from customers, you know, how, how safe they feel and uh, how comfortable they are to take such rides, you know, within the, uh, the, the, the garden. So this is one of our uh, success stories in, in Singapore. And uh, for the bigger platform, we are working very closely with the Land Transport Authority. So for this project, uh, we are um, in a consortium uh, with Singapore Autonomous Vehicle um, Initiative. And also we are working with different uh, institutions uh, like NUS, SUTD, NTU, ASTAR, uh, to make sure that you can uh, operate and you can deploy such uh, bigger vehicles in, in, a, in a place where you will be able to trial out again passengers at a higher speed because speed is also a key concern. You know, for me, I have experience on this AVs for almost close to eight years. And uh, even for me, if the vehicle is running above 25 kilometers per hour, I don't feel safe. So how are you going to create such acceptance in terms of customer for a vehicle that is running at 60 km per hour? Because at, right now we are testing this vehicle at 60 km per hour. And probably we are looking into deployments like a feeder bus services where you have dedicated lanes for these buses. And this bus will be able to at least serve a, 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 a closer group of uh, passengers uh, within the city. So this is what we are looking at uh, in terms of this bigger platform. Yeah, um, so next is a short video uh, to, to, to give an uh, insight of, of the, all the three platforms. Yeah. The autonomous future has arrived and ST Engineering is leading the way with its full suite of autonomous mobility solutions. First stop, Sentosa Island. Let's test the app out. The app is integrated with ST Engineering's autonomous vehicle management system which tracks the buses in real time and optimizes their use based on location and capacity. Okay, so the app predicted five minutes and sure enough, here comes our ride. Are you driving this bus? I thought it was an autonomous bus. In Singapore, autonomous buses must operate with a safety driver. We can take over if there is a need to. See, no hands. As you can see, the ride is pretty smooth. We're at the halfway point of the three-month trial in Sentosa, and about a thousand bookings have been fulfilled, ferrying more than 2,000 passengers. Next stop, Gardens by the Bay. Okay, new location, new bus. I'm now on board the Navia shuttle. You'll notice there's no driver's seat and no steering wheel in sight. But like all autonomous buses in Singapore, we have a safety operator on board. All right, here we go. The shuttle shares the path with quite a few pedestrians here at the garden. Good to have a vehicle that knows how to navigate around pedestrians. That panel can be used to program the route. It also shows how the bus senses its surroundings and maps its location using light detection and ranging, or LIDAR. We're heading into a narrower path with foliage on both sides. Let's see how the bus navigates.
One final point. This shuttle is bi-directional. That's a real advantage on paths where there isn't enough space to turn around. And now, on to our next stop, an industrial park. We're now at a different sort of location. Over here, the autonomous bus can make transportation for many ship workers more convenient. Once again, we have a safety driver in place in case of an emergency. This bus can accommodate up to 80 people, standing or sitting, and is wheelchair friendly. Screens along the bus inform passengers of the bus's location and destination. Okay, we're all set. Let's go! In an industrial park, the challenges faced by an autonomous bus are different. The roads here are populated with many heavy vehicles. Here's an instance where a heavy vehicle is stationary on the left lane, and the bus has to overtake it. It's good that the bus didn't have to come to a complete stop before changing lanes. Well, that was a taste of the future. What's riding autonomous buses like? Pretty much like a normal bus. Now, before I go, here's a wrap-up of the technologies leading the smart mobility revolution. Yeah, so um, that's a kind of um, flavor to the, the existing uh, product lines that we are working on. Um, as you can see, uh, this one is definitely for us, we are not looking at level five um, and then to wait for all the regulation to come in. You know, For us, we are starting with, with whatever we have and then we are trying to see how we can make out of uh, new business plans um, that you can start operationalizing these vehicles, at least to the applications that is uh, definitely uh, capable of accepting such platforms. Um, yeah, so going forward, um, so far you have seen all the, the Singapore deployments. So for us, we have also ex expanded our operational um, um, experience uh, in overseas projects. So as you can see, uh, starting off with Israel, so we have our Israel uh, subsidiary um, which is which is operationalizing the, the the smaller platforms at this stage. So we have already deployed uh, vehicles in uh, Barilan University, and uh, soon we are also deploying in Shebab Hospital in Israel to transport uh, Corona, uh, you know, infected patients. <laughs> because uh, we we recently, you know, looking at the pandemic situation, we also see autonomous vehicle as one of the the key. Um, uh, element to, to make sure that you don't have any operators or any human inside. And uh, for a short distance, you can try to run this vehicle without an operator. And then you can you can transport the corona patients or any samples or whatever. So we are trying to already do uh, certain deployments in Israel. And there are a lot of deployments happening in US as well. And uh, Japan is a very interesting case for us because um, as you know, Japan is facing a very serious aging population. Um, you know, they have a lot of aging society. And also they have shortage of drivers. So these two key reasons, um, I would say uh, it, it is compelling them to look into the autonomous transportation. And there are more than 1,700 local governments who are ready to do fundings to make sure that they have uh, this kind of autonomous transportation solution for rural areas. Because um, when, we, when we went and when we discussed with them, we already see there is a lot of issues in terms of the local transportation. The transport operators are not ready to give you a, 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 a kind of service every day because of uh, very less people, there is no revenue. Um, at the same time, you know, um, they, they, they don't want to continue the service. So, so, so in that kind of situation, I think autonomous vehicle um, is going to be very, very important for a market like Japan. And uh, we have already deployed the, the smaller scale vehicle um, last year. And uh, soon we will, we will be deploying our larger scale buses in Japan. And I would say in the next two to three years, uh, definitely we will be looking at deploying at least a level four buses um, in, the, in the rural um, areas of Japan. So Japan is definitely one of our key market. Um, Australia is also um, is, is one of the forefront uh, market player in terms, in terms of autonomous vehicles. So recently we did uh, our first trial in Tasmania, 
uh, with the Hobart City Council. Um, so, so this also is helping us to understand what is the public acceptance and what is the regulation. And uh, recently, we also started a new deployment in China, uh, in Chongqing, uh, Big, Data, Big Data Valley. Uh, so this is also another interesting use case because you have a lot of smart traffic light um, installations you know, done. Uh, like Park Hamam mentioned, you, you, you always need to look into the infrastructure side. So I think this project is definitely helping us to get um, into that angle because you already have the smart infrastructures in, installed in this uh, Xiong Big Data Valley. So what we are trying to do is to deploy our buses and see how we can try to create an ecosystem uh, within the place. And it's also going to be a service for the residentials there. So I think that's just going to be an, um, a value, uh, value added uh, thing. On top of this, I think for so far our experience with all these markets, Definitely homologation is one of the key challenge what we're facing at this stage. And also tax is one of the, the, the biggest barrier we have because each market is very different. And for us, we need to have exemptions for this kind of new uh, platforms, uh, you know. So, so it's, it's, it's getting a bit, uh, um, I would say not very fast uh, in terms of maturity, maturity for each uh, market to, to, to accept such kind of new technologies. Uh, but still, I think we are told, we are strongly trying to evolve in terms of the deployment that we are trying to do for the individual markets. Yeah, so uh, right now I would like to just give a, um, a very quick overview in terms of the market itself. Um, so as you can see, for us, the reason why we looked into the bigger bus platforms rather than working on the, the cars, because initially we started off our development with a hybrid car, uh, but slowly we realized that um, deploying or, or getting into an autonomous car is going to take some more time. You, know, you cannot commercialize the vehicles. As you can see, a Google, um, a GM, Tesla, you know, they are doing a lot of investments into this autonomous vehicle technologies, but they are still into trials and uh, they have a lot of challenges from the regulatory perspective. So for them, getting into a kind of business model is going to be very, very tough, um, at least for the next few years. So that's the reason why we didn't want to invest or we didn't want to go into the autonomous car um, uh, sector. Rather, we wanted to focus more in terms of the autonomous buses and uh, focus on the, the need, the niche uh, for the first and last mile connectivity. So uh, that's the reason why I think uh, right now we are moving from uh, POV test bedding to commercial operations. And um, as you can see, this AV uh, overall um, landscape, uh, the value chain is quite important because you cannot play in the entire value chain analysis. And uh, there are always um, uh, study tells you that you know you have to play uh, in, in 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 the services side or on the vehicle side. But this this question is very complex for any any company to 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 uh, take a decision. Uh, but right now, how uh, you can see is all the tier one OEMs and different uh, leading uh, autonomous vehicle players they wanted to play in the entire value chain. You know they don't want to play in a specific uh, value chain. Uh, but for us, we are looking more in terms of the operation and services, and then we try to bring in other collaborations, other partners to fill in the gap of the entire value chain. So this part, I think, going forward in the future is going to be very critical. So even if there is going to be a new uh, spectrum in terms of uh, deploying vehicles in Indonesia, probably you know, evaluating this kind of AV value chain is going to be very, very critical for any key player that is going to enter into the market. And uh, the recent um, Autonomous Vehicle Readiness Index from KPMG, uh, so Singapore is, is, is ranked one. So last year we were on the second position. So uh, this year we are ranked one. The, re the reason is quite simple because the, if you see the metrics, they are looking more into the policies and regulations and how the government is, is supporting this kind of AV initiatives. And also what is the acceptance from the consumer side? And technology well, innovation is always there because that is very key for such kind of new technologies and also infrastructure. So for all these things, I would say the key is the government. If the government is trying to come forward to give you support in terms of deploying these vehicles, definitely um, we will be progressing. And for Singapore, we are definitely fortunate that um, the government has given us um, a lot of leapway to 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 uh, deploy in certain areas to actually showcase the capabilities and showcase uh, uh, the, the, the 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 technicality of the vehicle itself, and then to slowly evolve into the the, the level five that we are ultimately looking at. 
So, so again, for us, the, the recent key target markets that I have just highlighted here, um, slowly we are looking into markets like Japan, Australia, Israel, where the autonomous vehicle has become a, a need and no more a novelty. Yeah, uh, and having spoke about the, the, the Singapore initiatives, um, as you can see, recently we have got this call for collaboration from Land Transport Authority and Economic Development Board of Singapore. So we have we are going to start in early next year um, uh, this project, where uh, the government has already identified three different areas, which is Jurong, Tenga, and Pungol, and in these three different towns, uh, we are going to have deployed almost like 55 buses or shuttles. So the, the aspect of this is the government wants to completely change the infrastructure and the the technology into an autonomous mobility area for this particular towns. So you could see that at least three three different towns, uh, what I'm showing right now, by five to seven years time uh, down the lane, you will be able to see a complete operationalizing autonomous buses. So I think this is a key initiative from the government by looking at specific towns, and then you are given an opportunity to look into the various tags that is there uh, that I've just highlighted because it's not just deploying the buses as you have seen, you have a lot of things like testing, or you need to have insurance is a key aspect when you are completely going level five and you're removing the operator. And then you need to get the infrastructure part aligned. And also you need to have all the connectivity, cloud services. The mapping is going to be very, very critical because if the roads are changing quite often, the maps also need to change. So, so the, the criticality in terms of that is always not easy to handle. So all these key stacks needs to be addressed. And in, in my view, I think the next five to seven years is going to be a key for us to address all these gaps with different stakeholders. Because um, if, you, if you ask me, we're not doing this alone. Uh, we are working with different stakeholders in, in Singapore. We are working with different companies uh, to help us to achieve this vision, to, 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 to have a complete operationalizing autonomous uh, solution in, in these towns. Yeah, uh, so to, to summarize, um, again, um, as you can see, to completely operationalize the vehicles, uh, like the Minister of Transport mentioned, it's not, it's not easy for us to go into level five just like that. And for us, even if the vehicles are ready, but as you can see in the video, you can always uh, um, imagine that the vehicles are already ready to commercialize. But at the same time, you could see there are different hurdles for you to, to, to achieve the level five capability. For instance, the regulations, the insurance, the weather, because right now uh, the sensors itself is having limitations. So you will not be able to operate this vehicle in all weather conditions. So it is going to be challenging for us to justify on that angle as well. So for us, it's a complete ecosystem. So this ecosystem, you need to try to solve each and every puzzles to, to achieve the, the level four and five that we are looking at. So lastly, um, I would like to finish my presentation uh, by giving my experience in terms of the, the Asian games. Um, it was a wonderful experience for, for me and my team. Um, in uh, 2018, uh, we got this opportunity to work with Telcom Cell. Um, and uh, we, we did a deployment uh, for almost a month's time uh, to showcase the, the vehicle, the capability uh, during the Asian, Asian games. And for, for, for us, again, uh, the reason why I, I wanted to put it as a three different phases is, as I mentioned, every new country is, is challenging. And uh, the, the, the phase one, you know, the setting up uh, to make sure that you have a proper GNSS base, uh, you have a proper setup to make sure that the vehicle can completely run. Um, it is always a new challenge. And definitely this particular deployment, we did it in a private site. So we were not able to, uh, there's no, no need for us to clear any homologation um, perspective. But, but again, uh, as an overall experience for us, it's definitely a new learning. And uh, also in terms of deployment, we could already see that people got a bit of receptance in terms of getting a kind of comfort in, in taking these rides. Because for us, during this deployment, we had too many people around the around the buses. You know, it's it's like, it was not um, a sanitized area. So as you can see, the the, the, the traffic was, was quite intense, uh, but still uh, the vehicle and the pedestrian um, alignment was was quite impressive for us to, to see. Um, yeah, so, so we are also looking for 
uh, future uh, deployments in Indonesia, we are already talking to different customers. And so hoping forward to see whether if we could at least start the deployments in private sites, and then also to help the, the ministry in terms of policies, in terms of framework, that whatever we have learned in Singapore, definitely, I think we will be able to contribute uh, back to Indonesia. Yeah. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ms. Kika. That was a very insightful session covering the introduction of SC Engineering, their AV capabilities, and also their current projects, um, the AVMS, the management system, and also your experience in the 2018 Asian Games. And now moving on to our final speaker for this evening, Papa Suhono will present his viewpoint towards integrating AV and smart city within Indonesia. Papa Suhono, kumiyapreslahan. Thank you, Bisa. Uh, selamat malam, Bapak Menteri Perhubungan yang saya hormati. Uh, kemudian, Bapak Hamam Risa, Kepala BPPT. Kemudian, uh, Pak Jaka Sembiring sebagai Wakil Rektorat ITB. Dan Miss Christina from uh, Singapore. Uh, in this uh, occasion, I would like to share about the city transformation and autonomous vehicle. Sudah kelihatan belum ya? Kelihatan? Sudah? Belum, Pak. Oh, belum, belum. Belum, belum. saya share ya? Belum, Pak. Suwono. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, Oke. Okay. Sudah? Ya, sudah, Pak. Oke, okay. tapi masih kepotong. Oke. Okay. Di... Maximize dan slideshow. Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, Pak. Yeah. Yeah, sudah. Uh, because uh, I would like to introduce also Smart Cities and Communities Innovation Center at ITB, uh, selected by Ministry of Education last week as a one of the center of excellence uh, on a Smart City and Communities uh, Innovation Center. So in this uh, webinar, I would like to focus on the city transformation and maybe related, of, of course, related with the autonomous vehicle. City is a system of system. I think there are a lot of subsystem in a city. There's a health system, educational system, trade subsystem, and also transportation or mobility subsystem. Autonomous vehicle is one of the sub 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 uh, subsystem in the ecosystem in the city well before we discuss about the challenges of this city we would like to try uh, one again that uh, uh, explain by Pak ministry uh, transportation in regarding in the january uh, meeting uh, cabinet uh, talk about the autonomous vehicle for the new capital. This is a president talk in January uh, 15. Whereas the new capital must be constructed by uh, driverless car or autonomous vehicle. I think this is interesting. However, uh, oh, besides last August, sorry, in, uh, in the nation language, President also uh, gave a directive about five steps on the transformation of digital transformation acceleration. I think this uh, related because autonomous vehicle is very related with the digitalization, digitization, and so on. So how the regions of the ecosystem in new capital in regard for the autonomous vehicle. There are five steps. It's a connectivity, a roadmap, a data center, a talent, and also policy. I think very interest to connect it between one directive and another directive. Well, I'm from the smart city community, talk about the city's challenges. The urbanization 
uh, transform the number of citation who stay in a city uh, now is more than 50%. 50 years ago, maybe only 35% stay in the city. Then the problem or challenge in the city is the, yes, the transportation jam, the hat, the waste, and so on and so on. And the interesting, interesting, the, the culture. If we look this uh, picture, the animal can uh, queen with the discipline. However, the human still uh, work or uh, yes uh, activities in not in a good culture. People be have become educated but have not become human. This is one of interesting and we transform the city from the old city to the new city from the yes uh, not a stupid city <laughs> to a uh, smart city this is one of the many uh, several challenges in the city uh, ecosystem and based on our observation our center innovation and there are uh, increasing of the city problem because on the urbanization if we solve with the conventional solution the wider uh, gap between the city problem and the solution wider and wider so we need a good solution best solution or innovative solution so that we can solve the problem of the city. There are several challenges of the city in integration, scalability of capacity, responsiveness and timely, reliability, efficiency, service continuity, and sustainability. Complexity city, complexity of the city problem is growing fast. So we need a proper solution. Thank you for the disruption technology, like in uh, artificial intelligence, uh, internet of things, big data, cloud, of com cloud computing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, so that we can uh, provide proper solution. We use uh, approach with the uh, what, the why, what will happen what should we do regarding the problem in all our life. Then we can say the smart system based on the sensing, understanding, and acting. This is uh, one of the principally on a autonomous vehicle, but not in an autonomous vehicle, but also in our life, in our health system, in our educational system, in our government system, and so on and so on. So what is a smart city? Capital city becoming a smart, becoming sustainable. Smart city is not just city plus technology, but the people, the process, culture, and plus data is the uh, component in a smart city. And we try to define smart city as a city that can utilize its resources effectively and efficiently to solve any city challenges using smart solution. Smart solution is not only technology. Yeah, if in Indonesian language, terdas, terdas, is uh, in 1945 when the former of Indonesian uh, nation was uh, mencerdaskan kehidupan bangsa. Smart nation is not only technology, but also people, process, and so on. And the objective is to improve the quality of life.
And what is the objective of the smart city? Is the goal and objective is improve the quality of life. We define or we differentiate into three layers. Basic layer in resource layer. For example, Jakarta is different with the Kalimantan, uh, Samarinda, uh, Semarang, Surabaya, and so on and so on. And then the enabler layer, smart people, smart governance, smart infrastructure, is one of the uh, important or enabler uh, layer. Last week, we discussed about the uh, uh, need for the people to move from Jakarta central government to Kalimantan to new capital. What kind of the uh, human capital in a new capital? It is not easy to only move the PNS from Jakarta to new capital, but we need also the human that proper for the smart capital. And then the surface layer, what kind of the new capital must define in the social, economy, environment, for government, or for education, and so on. So the important thing is how to improve the quality of life. Well, I would like to also uh, describe there are three kind of the research in ITP, one of the, my center of uh, innovation of uh, city and uh, community, another is uh, unmanned system, Professor Dotot regarding the integrated uh, capsule for the public transportation, and Professor Bambang Rianto on re in regard the AI for the uh, vehicle system. And in my laboratory, we uh, construct a city living lab that the function is how to send the problem or the situation in the city and then we calculate, we compute, we try to understand with the, yes, maybe in uh, AI or the uh, big data and so on and so on, so that we can know what happened and understand what the problem in the city. And Professor Bambang now has worked for the AI for the uh, autonomous vehicle and pa, uh, dot dot work on uh, cap capsule. This is one of the, our objective is how to improve the quality of life with AI, machine learning, internet of things, big data, robotic. And then of course the first must be con must consider basic value. And then the second one is the smart value. This is for our, uh, yes, uh, approach with the, what happened, what will happen, what, how can we make it happen in all sector in the city, maybe in a health, pandemic, education, economic, social, also in a uh, autonomous vehicle. This is one uh, component of the smart city uh, platform that we uh, construct in a Garuda Smart City Framework, safe and secure platform. One is the prevention, detection, response, and recovery. Predictive crime, big data analytic, predictive maintenance, and also enabling the detection, video analytic, video surveillance, mobile sensing, and response in a, uh, for the safe and secure platform. Okay, let me connect between the uh, uh, mobility and the smart city. There are advantages in a smart city. Connect net of thing, machine learning, big data, mobility and demand, on demand. This uh, in the uh, connected uh, automated vehicle and then uh, go to the smart city. And of course, the objective or the benefit is to of safety improvement, reduce congestion, 
reduce emission and use of fossil fuel, improve access to job and services, reduce transportation costs, improve accessibility and mobility. And well, we try to understand what happened in Indonesia. Every hour, approximately three people are dead due to road accident occurs in Indonesia. 61% by human, 9% by vehicle, 30% by environment. This is from the police data of Indonesia. Human often appear as the center of the problem during accident. And Indonesia has been on the most rank, uh, the most congestion made in one year with uh, ineffective transportation, high congestion, abundance of vehicle, high cost impacted by traffic jam. This is uh, the data. Well, what is the autonomous vehicle and car? I think Mr. Christina has also described about that. Autonomous car is also not a robotic car or formally of driverless or self-driving is autonomous vehicle capable of fulfilling the human transportation capabilities of a traditional car. As an autonomous vehicle, it is capable of sensing its environment and navigating without human input. Robotic car exists mainly as a prototype and demonstration system, but are likely to become more widespread in the future. Basically, autonomous vehicle technology architecture is divided into three uh, components. One is sensor. The second is uh, we we call this understanding is the perception, and then planning to control, sensing, understanding, acting. In agama Islam, is a uh, ikro tabayun bertindak. There are some kind of sensor. It's a camera, radar, radar, GPS, and other. And then understanding by perception and detection, lane detection, traffic light detection, traffic sign detection, object detection, and tracking, free space detection, localization, and then planning, route planning, prediction, pla behavior planning, trajectory planning, and then control. This is one of the disruption case in an autonomous vehicle from 1,900, how to transform from the industrialization, uh, from the manual to electronic car, new use car, and then expected in two Euro 40 below expectation car fulfilling the new plane of consumption need. And this is my uh, fit in a ICT related is a global technology roadmap, processing, sensing, actuating. This is a roadmap of the technology in regard for the uh, autonomous vehicle uh, development. And this is interesting. Uh, Pak Menteri, the Ministry, uh, explained about the grid of the autonomous. It's level zero, level one, level two, level three, level four, level five. They need 150 years to, uh, yes, to change becoming uh, driverless. This is uh, level zero to level five. I would like to uh, saw the, my colleagues, uh, Professor Bambang Rianto, uh, that research in AI for the autonomous vehicle based on, uh, yes, uh, if the end-to-end -end, uh, from the non-physical component, physical component, and then how to action space and cetera, et cetera. As uh, our uh, explained before, the sensing, computing, action, sensing, leader, camera, another sensing and then computing, uh, perception, local, localization, detection, prediction, path planning, vision planning, motion planning, decision state uh, machine, and also uh, steering and acceleration and brake. 
This is uh, one of the uh, results from Professor Bambang Rianto Richard. And then uh, this is uh, object detection because I think uh, there are a lot of uh, challenges if we move in the uh, complex uh, road. This is an algorithm that developed by Professor Bambang Rianto. Before that, I uh, continue. I also would like to uh, another research. Just a moment. I change the, and then I would like to another. This research is done by Professor Mulya Widodo with the Integrated Capsule Mobility for Public Transportation. He uh, set up the uh, field test in a uh, Subang, about 100 kilometers from Bandung. Yes, I think uh, in principally uh, the intelligent trans uh, transport system should provide flexibility, reliability, safety, pro safety procedure, and efficiency. This is our uh, homework for the future. And uh, beside the problem of the people, people is not only developer, but also uh situation that will as a part of the ecosystem in the city i think enough to begin but bisa okay but thank you for your insightful presentation covering the smart city challenges um also the goals to improve the quality of our life via, via aav and the safe and secure platform of your smart cities. Um, now we move on to our Q&A session. Um, so please, if you have any questions, please add it in, in our Q&A Zoom feature. But before we move on to our Q&A session, here is a promotional video from Impulse, an event in collaboration with IEEE and Jaime Bebe. All right, so just a quick background. Um, um, Impulse is an innovation event for high school and, uni and university students organized by the Jaime ITB or the Electrical Engineering Student Association ITB and the IEEE ITB student branch. So this year, Impulse will present a series of interesting events in the form of paper and innovation competitions, conferences, workshops, and company visits, which will start from November 2020 to February 2021. So this year's theme is the smart city application of the new Indonesian capital city, where you can contribute to the development of Indonesia's new capital city and encourage innovation on a national level. 
So for more information, you can follow our Instagram at ImpulseITV. So now we're going to start our way to Q&A session. We will start by answering the questions on our G form first. Okay, so from our G form, the first question is for Ms. Kretika. Uh, is there any discipline that may be useful besides machine learning? What about deep learning? So um, if you think uh, the AV development itself is, uh, is a quite multidisciplinary um, domain. So you have uh, various opportunities in terms of uh, uh, definitely machine learning is, is one. Uh, deep learning is a future because there are a lot of um, OEMs and uh, tech players who have already started uh, working in depth on, on, on the deep learning concepts. So um, yes, I, I, I would say uh, the future, uh, apart from the robotics, you know, the engineering part, the programming, the algorithms, um, uh, deep learning and cybersecurity will be uh, uh, key areas to work on. Okay, thank you, Ms. Kritika. Uh, the next question is for Professor Sohono. Um, how does autonomous car interact with its environment, such as traffic lights, zebra crosses, pedestrian, and old cars, without the autonomous tech? Yes, uh, thank you. Yes, uh, I think uh, the challenges because the complex system in a new area is new. Uh, yes, new uh, resident is okay, but if we in a existing city. I think there are a lot of uh, uh, risks. So if we use the, or we try to uh, implement the autonomous vehicle, we must in a in a free area, and of course we must try to how uh, how well. It depend on the also uh, the uh, quality of the uh, auto. Uh, autonomous vehicle on the system. So I think we cannot, yes, how, how work well is, so we must have an independent uh, certification so that we can uh, give uh, certified, yes, it's so good or well. And then there are still a lot of uh, challenges in a policy and ethic in uh, policy and et cetera, et cetera. I think this is uh, uh, our challenge for the future, how to make a uh, sensor more reliable, more uh, high quality, and also Okay, so I think that Professor Sohono's um, computer is lagging. Uh, let's just move on to our second question first um, from Ms. to Ms. Kritika. How is the industry seeing the opportunity of AV business in C, especially in Indonesia? So um, I would say it is definitely a bit challenging for Southeast Asia, um, you know, starting with Singapore, um, I think we are slowly looking into um, Indonesia. Um, yeah, sorry, this is uh, one of the problem of the reliability of connectivity. This is one of the only one component, connectivity. <laughs> we use uh, one of the, uh, yes, uh, internet provider, still not reliable. So if we use, <laughs> if, if we implement the automatic uh, autonomous vehicle in a in a city now is we, we must prepare in a, uh, enough uh, ecosystem. Okay, Professor, I'm sorry. Uh, I asked the question to Miss Kritika before. 
So it's okay. I think he completed okay. the last one. <laughs> okay, he completed the last one. Okay, yeah. Australia, can you? Yeah. Can you so yeah. So in in my view, in terms of uh, business, I think. Uh, um at least for the private sites if the government um uh, authorities is trying to to support such kind of deployments uh, definitely we could uh, get into a viable and profitable business models for uh, but for it it's very country specific i would say because for singapore we don't have any regulations or any authorization that is required by the government to operate in a private site uh but it's not similar uh in the other countries because other countries think uh, even in indonesia we we don't have yet the policies uh which is already there uh for us to even kick start any operations in a private site so i think it's it's going to be quite a evolving process uh once the government is getting into um more detailed uh, in 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 establishing that kind of standards probably it's going to be easier for us to kick in uh the business okay thank you ms kritika The next question is also for uh, Suhono. Um, from an academic perspective, how is the current condition of research and development of AV technology in Indonesia? So, what can be done to improve the condition? So, it's a question from the Tewaju, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think uh, the advantages and disadvantages of autonomous vehicle. Yes, of course. In uh, advantages, is very yes. Uh, with accurate with the uh, more efficient without parking maybe and so on and so on but the disadvantages we we still need the good ecosystem proper ecosystem with the discipline people discipline ecosystem and so on so, so i think the 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 this uh, or this uh, need for the uh, culture of the people is important yeah. technology I think there are a lot of advantages to make more efficient, to make uh, more uh, green, uh, sustainability, and so on. But the environment or the ecosystem, we need more. Yes, uh, calculation. Thank you. Thank you, Pak. Um, the next question uh, for Ms. Kritika. We often see a driverless ecosystem from only the perspective of autonomous vehicles. So, how about the from the autonomous traffic management? Will the capital deploy this technology, for example, intersection management? And if so, to what extent? Um, if I understood correctly, I think the question is more towards the traffic management, right? Yes, towards of traffic management. Yeah. So um, again, for us, uh, it's it's it's. definitely a challenging part in terms of need to x because even in singapore we are not having the flexibility to deploy in all the public roads so we have the smart traffic lights installed only in few areas or few places where you can deploy your autonomous vehicles so it it is it is it's definitely it's important for us to um, have such features to be able to run on a public road so at this stage um, i think it's it's more in terms of the government support for especially on public roads but again in in for the private roads we are all already doing deployments in our military camps so we also have traffic lights inside military, military camps but for that we are uh, engaging our partners like siemens to 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 give us uh, the appropriate um, uh, v2x uh, solutioning that is definitely enabling the vehicle to um, use the traffic management system as an overall okay Thank you. So for, for Professor Sohono, uh, okay. bagaimana kesiapan kota-kota besar di Indonesia dalam implement, pengimplementasian mobil otonom? Okay. How are the big cities in Indonesia to implement <laughs> autonomous cars? Yes. I think um, in big city in Indonesia and um, I think still uh, not ready for the uh, uh, autonomous um, uh, vehicle. But if in a new city like in capital new capital i think this is uh, more reasonable in uh, every few years my institute organize to measure the index smart city rating in indonesia no indonesian city uh, now is in a smart city stage still towards smart city is so far for the smart city So I think the 
directive from the president for the new city is reasonable. But for the existing city like Jakarta, Bandung, Surabaya, don't think about in the next 10 years or next 15 years. It is difficult for me, for, for us to prepare that. But for the new capital, because from zero, and then we must prepare also the situation, the government policy, and so on. So it's a more proper if the uh, autonomous vehicle uh, 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 implement in the new city. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, now from our Q&A Zoom feature for Ms. Kritika. How can security be guaranteed? If in fact the car is not automatic, it still requires human vigilance, for example, in paying attention to, to the regulations of the engine and other car systems. Um, people want to use new things and they're always asking for the security, security systems other than the other systems. So how can that be guaranteed with the AV yes. cars? So um, in terms of ensuring the, the safe operation, the security is, is quite important. And also if you see um, uh, when we are taking measures for cybersecurity, you need to take into um, consideration different layers from the vehicle uh, layer to the application layer, uh, meaning you, the, the vehicle also cannot be accessed by the hackers. And also at the application layer, we are not trying to have uh, intruders that is, that is providing a threat to the overall vehicle. So um, again, we don't have a specific or a detailed standards for cybersecurity at this moment, but we are still uh, using the existing standards to make sure that at least the basic level of uh, security systems is in place for the vehicles. Um, so that it justifies at least uh, at the minimum level, uh, because there are few communication uh, within the vehicle uh, to the infrastructure is using you know, 4G and 5G. So even at the at the network level, we have to make sure that we, we work with the um, the operators to make sure that there is also an other uh, layer of cybersecurity that is in place. So that it's 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 again it's also an ecosystem. So you need to look into the um, entire spectrum from the vehicle um, to the application layer. Uh, we are definitely taking into consideration, and we are heavily investing on cybersecurity at this point of time. Um, so I think it's still an evolving uh, topic at this moment. Thank you. Thank you. So I think because of the time, this will be our last question. Our, there is three questions in here for Professor for, 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 for Pasuhono. Yeah. The first is, bagaimana proyeksi data yang, di, yang dibutuhkan dalam UI Coba EV di Indonesia? So the data projection in the uh, EV in Indonesia. Proyeksi data yang dibutuhkan dalam UI Coba Okay, thank you. I think uh, in a realization in Indonesia, uh, uh, one, uh, bagaimana perkedasan yang butuhkan dalam, of course, uh, uh, in Indonesia, there are uh, still in a starting point, yeah. Uh, in ITS, also I hear that uh, uh, they, they start for the intelligent car and for this as component, but of course, we need more detailed uh, data to get more accurate for the city readiness uh, for the autonomous uh, vehicle. But I, in, as I uh, recommend, we we must in a, uh, implement in the new area, but not in a existing area. It's very dangerous. Yeah. For, for example, for the Kota Mandiri or something like that. Uh, and then uh, the second is, uh, of course, we need also regulation. Uh, as far as I know, there's still in a uh, uh, discussion uh, for the preparation for the policy in a uh, uh, autonomous vehicle. And of course, the role of student and uh, the young people, or uh, Melinda, is. Uh, uh, very uh, challenging to uh, enforce the research because uh, autonomous vehicle don't talk about the vehicle. There are a lot of uh, benefit on the, another application of the autonomous or driverless car, not for the car, but for the office, for the airport, 
for the uh, station, for the office, for the manufacturer, uh, with the mindset, with the thinking, uh, similar with the autonomous vehicle. So I think uh, I appreciate for the student, for the young people, millennial generation, to uh, observe, to yes, to exercise, to develop, to thinking about the self-service, uh, robot autonomous uh, automatization, and so on and so on. Not only for the vehicle in the road, but for the road also important. But uh, we need uh, special location, special city for like in a uh, new uh, capital city. Thank you. Thank you, Pasuono and Ms. Kritika for your answers. So now we are uh, at the closing of our event. Um, I would like to first announce the winners of our door prize. The winners are Nurahma from State TMDG, Aura Dasha Zahra from BMAPS, Kiara Netza from Nursing Universitas Muhammadiyah Kalimantan Timur, Sastika Nilasari from ELITS, and Willington from MSITB. Congratulations. So finally, an announcement to everyone that our feedback form will be will be given to your emails and there will also be a link in our chat section. So please fill it in because it is a requirement to receive the certificate. So if you want to receive your certificates, please write, uh, uh, please fill in the, our feedback form. So for the speakers, uh, now uh, we will give a certificate as a token of appreciation and gratitude um, because because Pahamam and uh, the Minister of Transportation is no longer here. Um, we will just present it first to Ms. Kritika and Pas pa Suhono, and the rest we will gi be giving it to, to all your emails. Okay, so thank you so much, Ms. Kritika. Thank uh, you, thank you yes, so much. Thank Thanks you so much. much. Yeah, it's a good opportunity. Thanks. Thank you, and next is for Pasuhono. Thank you so much, Pasuhono, for being our speaker for this evening. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are finally at the end of our event. We could all conclude from this session that Indonesia's new capital city is capable of implementing safe and sustainable self-driving ecosystems of uh, the AV becomes a need for um, for the government and for its citizens and no more and no more a novelty, like Ms. Kritika says. And if we continue to improve the management system, city infrastructures, uh, vehicle policy and the regulation strategies and to also lastly know and understand the problems in order to organize resources effectively and efficiently maximize uh, and to serve our citizens. Thank you once again to State ITB, Ashipul Indonesia Section, Associated Karsas Indonesia Terdas, Impulse ITB and Kemenhub and BPPT for collaborating with us on this event. Also a big thank you to our partners once again, uh, IQ, SBUB, SBITS, Ashre, ITB and ITB Hits and SBUI. And of course, our greatest appreciation to our Bapa Budikarya, our Minister of Transportation, Bapa Hamam Riza, Ms. Kritika, Bapa Suhono, and Bapa Jaka for also delightfully sharing and spending your valuable time with us. I would like to thank all the participants as well for joining our webinar. I will be ending the meeting here. Good night and thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Prof. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, Diga. Yeah. Thank you, thank you all. Thank you, Prof. Michael. Thank, thank you, you Prof. So thank you. Cheers, thank you. Our pleasure. Okay, Bule is in, yeah? Yeah, Pak. Okay, Pak. Yeah. Thank you, Pak. Selamat istirahat, Prof. Makasih, Prof. Sarah, audio bisa dibuat panelis kan? Eh, ini kita masih live.
boleh dimatikan live-nya.